As archers, we hear a lot about cross dominance, and it's a condition that's far more prevalent than we would normally believe. This is the first in a series of videos that deals with the entire issue of cross dominance, from just how prevalent it really is, to why our present system is failing for most of these archers. We'll discuss just how to decide whether a particular archer should use their dominant eye or their dominant hand, and then, ultimately, how best to train these archers, whichever way we go. Most people believe that cross dominance is limited to just a few, because they also believe that most right-handed people are right-eye dominant, and most left-handed people are left-eye dominant. But are they? Let's look at the facts and see. About 90% of all people are right-handed, and 10% are left-handed. Also, about two-thirds of all people are right-eye dominant, and one-third are left-eye dominant. Most studies indicate that left-eye dominance is randomly distributed among right-handers and left-handers, and that results in one in three people being cross-dominant. It also suggests that one-third of all right-hand people are cross-dominant, and two-thirds of all left-handed people are cross-dominant. That's a lot of people. How are they handling it? Are they going with their dominant hand or their dominant eye? The experts go back and forth on this, hand or eye, with staunch advocates on both sides of the issue. But the fact is, the present approach is scattered and isn't working. Let's look at the statistics and see why I say this. At U.S. tournaments, you'll see about 10% left-handed archers. Archery companies also report left-handed equipment sales about 10%. That's in keeping statistically with hand dominance and indicates that most people follow their dominant hand. When you move to the international level, however, the percentage of left-handers drops dramatically. At the 2012 and 2016 Olympics, only 3% of all archers were left-handed. Historically, less than 3% of all Olympic medalists in archery have been left-handed. Even the U.S. hasn't sent a left-handed archer to the Olympics in 20 years. All other major international archery events have similar numbers. The percentage of left-handed archers is significant because if most cross-dominant archers were following their hand dominance, we would see about 10% left-handed archers at all levels. If there was even a small push to go with eye dominance, it would result in an increase in left-handed archers since left eye dominance is far more common than left-handedness. So, what would cause a decrease in the percentage of left-handed archers? One reason for this is that in many countries there is a cultural bias toward right-handers. In fact, in my 40 years in archery, there are many national teams and countries from which I've never seen a single left-handed archer. This cultural trend would encourage left-handed cross-dominant archers to go with their dominant right eye and right-handed cross-dominant archers to go with their dominant right hand. This is hardly a logic or scientific approach, but it happens. Another reason is, even without the cultural bias, many beginners learn at facilities that have predominantly right-handed equipment, so the coach is forced to make a push to the equipment he has available. The coaches at these beginner programs usually have little or no training or experience dealing with cross-dominant archers, so cross-dominant archers will often not perform as well and not move up as quickly, or even worse, drop out of the sport due to frustrations. Finally, many of the better private coaches who move the archers up to the national level and to the national teams are also poorly educated about cross-dominant archers and thus are not able to serve these archers as well, preventing cross-dominant archers from rising up in the same percentages. All of these reasons would cause a decrease in the percentage of left-handed archers at the elite level. I can't address the first two problems, but that last problem we can fix. I've worked with many cross-dominant archers that had exceptional results. So let's talk about a plan for addressing cross-dominant archers and how to help them excel in this sport. Let's start by changing the way we talk about dominance. Most people discuss dominance as if it's a switch, all or nothing as if somehow we can do things with our right hand, but we're completely incapable with our left hand. Or maybe we can see with our left eye, but somehow we're blind with our right eye. 
We all know we're more adaptable than that. We all know, for instance, that whether we're right-handed or left-handed, we're capable of using our alternate hand for many things. This crossover capability varies from person to person and from activity to activity, all the way from very klutzy to nearly ambidextrous. Writing is a tricky task to switch, but it can be done. Most people can do an underhand toss with either hand just as well. Rifle shooters usually adapt to the alternate hand quite easily. On the other hand, very few people can do an overhand throw with their alternate hand, but switch hitters are quite common. Many activities, such as playing the guitar, the piano, juggling, require active participation by both hands. Archery itself is not a one-handed activity. So it's not a question of whether we're going to use our dominant hand or our non-dominant hand. It's a question of which hand are we going to assign to which task. What all of these activities show us is that while we definitely do have a dominant hand, we have considerable capability and adaptability with both hands. Eye dominance is similar to hand dominance in this matter. Some people are strongly biased to their dominant eye. Others are quite adaptable. You've all seen beginning archers on their first day who are cross dominant come out, use their dominant hand, and never seem to mind using their alternate eye. You know what happens because, as we've said before, one in three people are cross dominant and we don't hear near that many complain about the problem. On the other hand, you've also seen those archers who come out, use their dominant hand the first day, and rather than using this eye, they lean their head way over so that they can bring their dominant eye in so they can see. Archers who are this strongly biased usually end up having to switch and go to their eye dominance. So we see that the answer may not be the same for everyone. While we can all adapt, we all can train our alternate hand or eye to do the job, we vary as to which is more adaptable. Many find it easier to adapt to the alternate hand. Others find it easier to adapt to the alternate eye. With this understanding, we can stop making sweeping rules of hand or eye and start doing some real thinking about what will work best for our individual students. But remember this, regardless of which way you go, it's the coach's job not just to help the student make the decision, but to help the student through that transition. In the next two videos, I'll explain how we do that.